Good morning, everybody. This is Christy Park, uh, the director of Texas Digital Library. I want to welcome everybody to the August TDL forum, the last the last TDL forum of the summer before all the students come back and 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 school gets started again. Um, we're glad you're here with us today. I'm joined by Ryan Steens, our assistant director here in Austin, and Courtney Muma, our services manager. And we'll be um, giving you some updates today about what uh, TDL has been up to over the last month. We're going to start with some staff and member news and um, then give a brief update on our DPLA hub expansion project that we've been working on over the past year. Um, and then Ryan's going to give some technical updates. Um, on upgrades and systems systems improvements that the tech team is working on. And Courtney will um, pop in for some updates on digital preservation work. And then I'll wrap things up with um, some news about events, including dates for the 2018 Texas Conference on Digital Libraries. So um, I'll start by saying you I haven't uh, led these forums over the last few months because Laura Waugh, our marketing coordinator, has been leading them. So um, I'm happy to be back in this seat, kind of emceeing. Um, and the reason for that is, if you haven't heard, that is that Laura has uh, moved on to another position and has left TDL. She, her last day was August 2nd. And we are so sorry to see her go. We um, have loved and appreciated having her with us for the last couple of years and all the work that she's done to coordinate our conference, um, our members and uh, member groups and committees, and the outreach that she's done on our behalf. We wish her very well in her uh, new position, which is at Texas State University in their library and are excited that we're going to get to continue working with her. Um, in fact, she will be serving, I think, my understanding is, on the TDR steering committee um, as their liaison to the to Texas Data Repository. So we will continue to, to get to see her smiling face and work with her, um, and we're excited about that. And we just wanted to make sure that all of you knew um, about that change on our staff and within our community. We also have some really good news and, and want to welcome <clears throat> a new regular member, Stephen F. Austin State University in Nacogdoches. Um, most of you know they've been an affiliate member for the last year using digital preservation services, and we're really excited that they've decided to upgrade to regular member and um, get all the full benefits of regular member status. We're looking forward to continuing to work with them to provide digital preservation services for their really rich um, digital archives that they have there in Nacogdoches and on other projects as well. So um, welcome to Stephen F. Austin. Welcome again to Stephen F. Austin. So next I want to um, give you a little bit of an update on our work to expand the collections that are being um, aggregated to go into the Digital Public Library of America. Um, we have we've pre presented on this um, topic at a number of um, conferences over, over the spring, so you may have heard us talk about it at TCDL um, or in these forums before. But as we're wrapping up the first year um, of this work, um, which was uh, part of a grant-funded project from the State Library. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge some of the work that's been done and give this group a little bit of an update on what we're doing. We're also doing a, a more extensive update this afternoon with a, a small group of pilot participants that we've been working with. So if you'll remember, um, this is a project to uh, with a number of partners, um, including the University of North Texas and Houston Public Library. Uh, with some grant funding from the Texas State Library and Archives Commission through their LSTA program to um, expand on the work that the University of North Texas has done through the Portal of Texas History in aggregating digital collections around the state 
um, to be included in the Digital Public Library of America. Um, currently, the Portal to Texas History is contributing their um, enormous collections, nearly a million items, um, to the DPLA. But um, that does not include, of course, a number of DSpace repositories, content DM repositories, and a whole host of other things around the state that people are self-hosting. Those things aren't currently going into DPLA. So we're working together to develop the technology and the business model and governance models that would um, allow us to expand um, that number of collections. One, one of the things that we've done over the course of the last year is try to get a sense of the um, scope and number of digital collections that exist in Texas outside of the portal to Texas history. And as part of that work, we've um, invited libraries, public and academic libraries, as well as museums and other kinds of collecting institutions to take a survey um, to let us know what kinds of collections they have and what they're doing with them. And as part of that work, we developed some, we, we learned a lot um, about what kinds of digital collections are out there. Um, from that survey, we learned that, um, at least from the respondents' survey, that 41% of academic libraries and 38% of public libraries have digital collections. Um, they are in many platforms, but DSpace and ContentDM dominate in terms of the platforms people are using for hosting their content. The majority of them are using Dublin Core or qualified Dublin Core. And we found a great inconsistency in the use of right statements um, in relation to their digital items. This is not surprising to us, but it's important to us because DPLA requires um, contributing repositories to articulate um, in some form or fashion uh, rights around the digital items that they aggregate. We also learned that while a majority of the institutions surveyed had materials in the portal to Texas history, only eight of those had everything in the portal, meaning, you know, a huge majority of these institutions have digital materials that aren't in the portal and therefore aren't discoverable in DPLA. So this really reiterated, validated for us um, the need for a service that's aggregating all of these collections so that they can be discoverable there. The second thing that we've focused on is the technology development, um, developing a harvester that can aggregate metadata from all these different collections. Um, and we've uh, landed on an open source tool called Supplejack out of Digital New Zealand as our aggregation and harvesting tool. Nick Woodward from here at TDL has been developing that. We've been working with a handful of pilot institutions to test that aggregator and find some of the challenges um, inherent in doing this work. And we've also developed a prototype search and browse front end for discovery of aggregated Texas collections. This is only a prototype. We're not quite ready to share it publicly um, yet, but hopefully in the next few months, it's something that we can maybe all take a look at together. Right now, we're testing it out with our, our pilot group. Looking ahead, um, we have, we're very excited that we've obtained um, a, additional grant from the State Library through the LSTA program for the next fiscal year to work on scaling up that aggregation technology and to develop outreach tools. We're also going to be designing that discovery interface and really making that something that um, will be useful and beautiful. We're going to finalize governance and funding models for a three-year period and do some additional outreach to libraries and archive the library and archives communities in Texas. And our, our goal is that by the end of this next year, we'll be in, we will be um, ingesting materials to DPLA um, actively. So we're excited about this work. It's been going well. The technology development has been, um, has been progressing quite well. And 
um, the challenge at this point is finding sustainable funding to do the to provide this as a service effectively statewide. And so I think that's the real challenge of the next year. And we'll be um, talking more with you about that um, and the rest of our work on it um, over the next several months. So with that, I'm gonna. Um, I think we'll go ahead and move on to the next topics, and then um, if you have questions, please feel free to ask those when we have time at the end of the presentation. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Ryan now to talk about some technical updates. Hi, everybody. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about is uh, something a bunch of the team at TDL is has been involved with. Um, it, and that's the upgrade of Dataverse uh, to 4.7.1, which is currently underway. Um, Harvard IQSS is the folk, are the folks who make Dataverse, and they've become really community focused uh, towards systems improvements. We're currently jumping from 4.6 to 4.7.1, so we have to go through a lot of uh, intermediary steps as we do that. And we have to look at all the new features in each of those steps as we go along. Um, and we're doing that internally, and we'll be sharing with the steering committee uh, the, the dev and training systems as we uh, get further along. Um, some changes are cosmetic, and, and we're trying to make sure that our system uh, retains its integrity and uh, everything looks the way you would expect it to as we go along uh, to each new step. Uh, some changes of note that I think you guys will, will be excited about. There's definitely some customization enhancements, um, and they're working on improving the interoperability with citation tools. Um, I think that that's really exciting. Um, something that uh, Courtney brought to, to the Harvard IQSS group was um, really wanting to be able to, uh, when people log in right now, they just come to the main page of our TDR. And we want them to be able to come to their university page. And that will be available to us at 4.7.1. Uh, there's also going to be some improvements of uh, mapping your data over to world map. So you get some better visualizations on world map. Um, and uh, something that I know I've been asked about uh, is the ability to add the department as a dataverse category. Um, so that is definitely coming down the pike. I can't tell you how excited I am that all of this stuff is coming. It's stuff I know you guys have asked me about, so uh, it's it's coming. Um, Courtney is going to be preparing some release notes, and we'll be making uh, those available, and we'll definitely continue to be available to answer questions through email, the ticketing system, any way you want to get in touch with us. Uh, we're, we're here to help with that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, and this is far broader in scope, is uh, we are beginning the first baby steps towards re-architecting uh, TDL's AWS infrastructure. Um, the person who's leading the charge on this is uh, Clark Kim, who's been with us about four months. Um, we have been in AWS for about six and a half years, seven years, and it's really time to reevaluate, make sure we're staying on the edge. Um, as we look at kind of part one that's a little more detailed because this is the part that we're currently underway with uh, is uh, AWS cleanup. We tend to hoard things within AWS and we want to make sure that we get rid of things we don't have, we aren't using that are stopped or, or just sitting on the systems um, so we can do that to get some cost savings. Um, there's some general improvements that we can definitely think about as far as all of our systems go. And that includes picking the best computers that AWS has made available because AWS is constantly changing and making new systems possible for us with, with better performance uh, and better memory, things like that. Um, the next thing we're moving on to then will be improving the security overall of, of uh, the TDL AWS. Um, I actually have to be a little cagey about how I talk about security and what we're doing, so if y'all can bear with me. Um, but, uh, we, are, we are going to be tightening up some of our security um, and improving uh, how we're thinking about VPN and putting in place some new auditing steps. Following that, and this is pretty far down the road, 
Uh, we're going to be working to re-standardize how we think about deploying systems and how we think about patching and upgrading systems. Um, and there will be lots of charts and lots of maps that we'll be putting online for all of that as we come to that point. But that is still many, many months away. Uh, but we just wanted to make a general announcement that that's where the TDL team is going to be spending its time. Uh, we'll be doing some of this as we perform upgrades on, on certain systems at TDL, uh, like doing the DS upgrade from DSpace 5 to DSpace 6 will give us an opportunity to put some of these measures in place at that time. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Ryan, can I ask you, um, will these changes have any impact on um, our users' access to their systems at any point? And if so, how will you, can you talk a little bit how you would communicate that out? Sure. I don't really expect for folks to really notice much um, as far as uh, access or downtime. Um, when that does occur, we'll be communicating directly with you guys and letting you know, making sure that this works with your schedule, that we're not interrupting processes, uh, work that you're doing with your faculty or researchers. Um, all of this will let you know ahead of time before we would take anything down. Um, that's part of why we want to include it in uh, like upgrades of systems because there's always going to be downtime there anyway as we make that transfer. So might as well um, kill two birds with one stone there. That's great. Thank you. Um, the, the work that Clark is doing and part of the reason that we wanted to talk about this is just to make sure that y'all are aware of all of the work that goes on behind the scenes with our systems administrators and the value that they provide to make sure that our systems are running smoothly and architected professionally and um, managed well and secure. And we're really excited to have Clark Kim on board. Um, he's been a great asset over the last few months in helping us think through how we can improve um, our systems and um, how we operate on that end of things. So that's great. Okay, so now I'm going to hand it over to um, Courtney Muma to talk a little bit about some developments in digital preservation. Thanks, Christy. Hi, everybody. Um, so first, I want to tell you about a webinar series that I have just put together um, starting in September and going through November. You'll notice the dates are slightly spread out, and that's because these folks are real hard to schedule. <laughs> they're extremely busy, and I really appreciate that they're willing to do that for us. So save these dates. Each of these four webinars will be 30 minutes long, um, 20 minutes of talking with an open 10 minutes of uh, question and answer at the end. So the first, uh, at the end of September, that's just going to be me. Um, I'll be giving an overview of all of the digital preservation services at TDL as we've kind of recently enhanced them and made some significant changes in the storage options that we are offering. October 6th is going to be DuraSpace's Heather Greer Klein speaking about DuraCloud, which is, of course, the gateway to any of the digital preservation storage options here at TDL. Um, November 3rd is going to be the executive director of Deepin, the digital preservation network, Mary Molinero. And then finally, we're going to end in November on the 10th with Sybil Schaefer, who is the UCSD digital preservation analyst who is in charge of Chronopolis there. So these are going to be really great. I'll be posting something very soon um, with links to where you'll join and how, um, how you can participate in each of these. And I hope many of you are able to join us. They're going to be really great, and especially the opportunity to ask questions directly of these representatives of these open platforms I think is going to be really valuable. Um, the other thing I want to update about is uh, I've been out on the road <laughs> quite a bit lately. So um, the first thing here is um, in Newcastle in the UK last month, I was asked to participate in something called Records DNA. The goal of that workshop was to set a research agenda for the ideal digital evidence base of the future. So what we were doing was really trying to step outside of what we consider good practice in digital preservation and instead think about what does that look like 20, 30 years from now when someone's approaching 
digitally preserved content. Um, and then once we envision that, what is the research agenda that we need to come up with to make that happen? It was really excellent. Um, we had people there from libraries and archives and IT services, but also philosophers and historians and um, English professors, digital humanists. It was really fantastic. I'm writing a blog post on behalf of this project for um, their own blog. And so I'll share that certainly with TDL through our list. Um, then in Portland, Oregon, I attended the Society of American Archivists conference. Um, I was only there for the Friday and Saturday. Um, this year, it was overwhelmingly focused on making archives more inclusive and dismantling white supremacy and how you might do that from the archives perspective. Um, that's especially pertinent, I think, now um, due to the events of last weekend. Um, I think that's really brought these issues even more to the fore. And if any of you are interested in seeing some video from that, um, there are several sessions that are available on the Society of American Archivists website. And I'm also happy to answer any questions about any of the sessions that I attended personally. You can email me directly. Then the other thing I did, <laughs> um, I went to the University of Houston. Um, and I spent a really great day and a half there um, working and whiteboarding to establish a workflow and a development agenda so that they can process their digitized content, including audio visual materials, um, through Archivematica, which is, of course, the digital preservation system, and some other local tools that they've developed to manage their metadata and their workflows ultimately to send packages to their digital preservation storage environments that they've selected. Um, we got a lot done. I was really happy with the work there. Um, and it's a wonderful team. And I want to remind all of you that if you are using digital preservation services, you too can have a consultation day. <laughs> so that's part of your benefits as a member using digital preservation services. The only thing you need to cover is travel and accommodation. Otherwise, this is, this is part of what you get um, as a member is my consultation services. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I could update you on those. I'm happy to answer any questions about any of these. Um, you can email, email me. I'll put it in the chat for you all. Awesome. Thanks, Courtney. So we'll just wrap things up here with a, a few um, reminders or announcements about upcoming events. And then um, you can get your questions ready and enter those in the chat window if you have them. Um, just wanted to announce that you should mark your calendars for TCDL 2018, which will be held May 15th through 17th. Here in Austin, we will be back at the Commons Learning Center um, up in North Austin near the domain on the Pickle Research Campus. And you can see that there's a link here to the TDL.org website where we are starting to gather um, and post information about the conference. We'll be posting um, registration rates very soon on there so that you can start your planning. Um, we're going to be using a slightly different set of tools for TCDL this year. So we'll be using TDL.org to post information and a new system called Cvent for managing registration. So everything's going to look a little bit different in terms of our online presence this year. So um, I, and we hope we'll look a little better and work a little better. So um, just get ready for that. We're really excited, as always, to be um, starting the planning for TCDL 2018. And then a couple of reminders. One is a reminder that we, along with UT Libraries and DuraSpace, are hosting a 2017 Fedora Camp in Texas um, this coming fall. That will be October 16th through 18th in the Perry Castaneda Library here at UT Austin. It is a deep dive into Fedora and the Fedora platform. Um, it will be a great opportunity for those who are doing development in Fedora or really interested in getting a, a pretty intensive look at, at um, that platform. TDL members are um, eligible to select the member rate when you register for this camp. So that member rate it means DuraSpace member. 
um, when you when you log on and register. But because um, TDL is sponsoring as a member of TDL, you can select that member rate because we are members of DuraSpace. So I encourage you to look into that if you haven't already. I think the early registration discount is passed, unfortunately, but you can still register and join us. Um, and in other Fedora news, the South Central States Fedora Users Group Meeting um, will be held next week, is that next week? August 23rd through 24th at Texas A&M in their Medical Sciences Library and College Station. Um, there is information um, available in the Google Groups, the Google Group for that mm -hmm. users group <laughs> um, at the link there. And they'll be sending out agendas and, and et cetera. Um, uh, well, those have been posted, actually. So you can go to the Google group and find those in the archives. I want to thank uh, Texas A&M for hosting that. That's been a great community-driven um, uh, group of folks who are all working on or interested in Fedora development. And that um, concludes our prepared um, slides, but we do have a little bit of time for questions. So if you have questions or comments, things you want to announce um, or share, we have some time for that. Please uh, feel free to enter those in the chat window. <laughs> That's great, Santi. We're ready for your questions. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> Is there a timeline for the upgrade of TDR to the latest version? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Ryan, are, do you want to feel Sure, that? yes. There is a loose timeline. Um, I, we hope to be done by the end of next week. Um, well, at least to be able to release it to the steering committee. Um, I was just thinking of when Nick Lowland would be finishing up his work. Um, so we're pretty we're moving pretty quickly on it um, and uh, able to resolve the differences between the the different versions pretty easily with our code base. So so far so good. We're currently at four point seven. Uh, so we just need to make that jump to 4.7.1 on uh, dev and then training um, for for all for our system there. So the idea I think is to Release do the upgrade and let the TDR steering committee test it and look on, at it on training. on training before we release it into the production instance. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it's moving, as Brian just said, it's moving quickly and should be in the next few weeks. What else you got, Santi? That was easy, Santi. It was a hard <laughs> one. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Oh, yeah, we are sorry to hear about Laura, too. Um, yeah, that's a good question about how we're kind of um, dealing with Laura's absence. So in the meantime, um, we are going to refill that position um, in the next few months, but there will be obviously some, uh, some time where we don't have anybody in the position. So in the meantime, you should contact Leah DeForest, who is our um, communications strategist, and Courtney is going to put her email address in, um, in uh, the chat window, or me, and, and really probably and me. So um, get in touch with me and Leah if you have questions. Um, I'm, I'm stepping in on the conference committee. Uh, Leah is stepping in with coordinating some of the training and things like that. So we're we're um, filling in as needed um, until we can fill a position. <laughs> Great. Thanks for the questions. If anybody else has questions after we uh, we conclude, you can always contact us at info@tdl.org or any of us individually, of course. 
Um, and we look forward to talking with you over the next month as the as the academic year gets started again um, and seeing you at various events over the course of the next few months. So uh, y'all take care and uh, good luck with the, the coming year. We'll see you again here next month. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.